Limited company shares. A share is just is just a share. Every share shareholder gets one, and that's it. Really, isn't it? Well, yes and no. A limited company must must have shares at a minimum of one share per shareholder. And indeed, the majority of companies in the UK will have one type of share or class. Uh, but that doesn't mean necessarily that that's the best structure for every limited company. There are a variety of types of shares. And in this, this video, we're going to talk through what are the main different types there are and some of the reasons that you might choose to set up your, set up your limited company with different types of shares from the outset. Because changing the types of shares and, and classes further on down the line can be expensive and can take some time uh, to do later on. So it's worth getting it right from the outset. So in this video, as I say, we're just going to talk through the various types of shares that you can have in a, in a UK limited company. Before we get into, into what the different types of shares are in a limited company, Neil, I suppose the first question would be, why would you, why would you bother? Yeah, you I think the, the, the starting point is to um, understand what are the three different rights that are attached to a share. And, and that applies to um, just generally business owners as well. What, what does a business owner want um, for, from owning the, their business? Uh, and break it down, there's three things. There's a right to income, a right to capital, and a right to control, if you like, or a right to vote, as we, we put it there. And that applies you know, across the board for some people by owning shares or owning a part of a business, they think they'll earn more money. It's about having income. It's about having a share of the profits. For some people, it will be to have something that we're going to build this business and we're going to sell it in the future. And I want to share in that capital growth. And for other people, it will be about having some control over their own life or having a say in the running of the business and, and wanting um, some right to, to vote or, or an element of control. And those are effectively are the three rights that go with the shares. Um, and an ordinary share in a company um, has equal of those rights with every other ordinary share. So if, yeah. if four people set up in business together and they own 25% each, they're going to get 25% of the dividends, they're going to get 25% of the um, of the value of the business when it's exited, and they have 25% of the votes. So three of them can outvote the other one and you have some say and influence over the direction that the company will have. So, so those are the three main areas that there are probably going to be differences between, between types of shares. So going back to the why are you going to bother doing that? Because different be... shareholders will at attach a different value oh, yeah. to each of those rights. Um, you know, someone who's, uh, who's investing in the business and owns a small percentage, the actual right to vote may not be important. They are investing in the management team, they're trusting the management team to make the right decisions and good decisions, and they just want a big exit in five years time. They, they might not be that interested in the income. We don't want income, reinvest it in the business and grow. Whereas you know, a young founder might be thinking, well, I've set this business up because I want to have control over my life and I want control. So, so having uh, a greater attachment to the, the right of voting and the control element. You may have an employee who you really want yeah. to encourage to stay with you and whatever, and they might be all about the what, how much more money am I gonna get in the next year or two? Income is important. Or, no, I want a big stake in the, or a bigger stake in the exit because I'm helping build it for the sale and I'm earning my income and I'm more worried about the capital so, amount. So so in terms of why you might why it's important is it's you're trying to understand the motivation or Behind, the importance yeah. for, of each of those areas for the different people as, as what is going to you know float their boat around actually owning some shares in in the business why why yeah. why have they got it which is most important to them. And it's, it's back to that. We, we have another video in terms of how many shares a startup should probably have in a limited company. And we talked about, again, it's around flexibility, isn't it? That's the, that's yeah. the reason for having different types of different shareholders have different motivations. Therefore, you can set up a structure that gives you flexibility both now and in, and in the future.
That's right. So, you know, why use different types of shares? And, you know, in our other video, we've talked about alphabet shares. So they can all have, on paper, they have the same rights, but an ordinary A share has the same rights as an ordinary B share, but the directors can choose to do something differently with each um, each class of share. Yeah. So you can share the income differently, you could share capital differently, you'd be able to do things. Um, yeah, and, and it would depend on each each one that you wanted to do, as, as we've got on there, you know, to attract investment. What do the investors want? You know, what's going to be important to them? If, how are you going to help persuade them to part with their money and invest in your business? Um, if you're trying to encourage staff to stay, what's going to be the driving force behind that that's going to motivate them to stay and work and grow the business? Um, you know, it's a pay dividends in a specific way. That again is if you want to reward um, people who are working in the business or, or helping to grow the business, how you want to reward them differently to other people. Again, a different class of share that has an emphasis on income. You know, maybe doesn't have any voting rights. It's just a mechanism to get income into the hands of the shareholder as opposed to um, as opposed to the capital or, or, or the voting rights. And it, when we're looking at that, what the different different types of shares are, the they're going to put, they're going to fall probably into one of these five categories, aren't they? There's the ordinary ones which you've talked about before. The most common, very typical, carry one vote per share, no special rights or restrictions. But if there are other types of shares, such as preference shares, the ranking then can can come in and be different from that. Yeah, and, and you know, the, there's no. Um... There's no real definition of a preference share other than it has some preferential right, but it could be any one of the three rights that it has the preference over. So it could have a preferential right to income, mm -hmm. it could have preferential right to voting, or it could have a preferential right to capital, yeah. or a mixture of all three. Um, so again, that's when you'd be looking at what what are you trying to achieve by letting someone own those shares you know, what is going to help motivate them to, to do what, what the business yeah. needs them to do. And it's where there, there can be a bit of crossover as well. I know there are sort of distinct types, but like preference shares can be redeemable. So there's a bit of, there's almost crossover. It's not necessarily absolutely distinct between the various types. Absolutely. And that's, you know, especially if you haven't got, um, if you haven't got a ready market, you know, so a private company, how do, how does someone realize their investment so they put their money in and if there isn't going to be a trade sale or a flotation or whatever how do i get my money back so you can either try and create an internal market or using redeemable shares where effectively the company you know it's much it's closer to being like a loan or it's a bit of both you can redeem the shares i.e the company will buy them back from you and give you your money back um, after a period um, but that also allows you to well, actually, there might be a bigger event. I won't redeem them. I'll hold on to them. So that can allow the investor to sort of hedge their bets, if you like. It's sort of, I could get my money back. There's a mechanism to get my money back. Or I can stay in because there's Which can be an be incentive for the founders as well in terms of, yeah, if, yeah. Doing this, if they do well, that investor is not likely to want to, to redeem them yeah. according to the, their initial setup. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The, the fourth one that we look at there, deferred ordinary shares, um, just as it says, the shares in which no dividend is paid until all the other classes of shares have received a minute, minimum div, dividend. Um, after that, they'll usually be fully participating, which we're talking about the voting and things like that. Yeah. It's gonna behave like a, like a, nor, a normal ordinary share. And then non-voting non ordinary shares, is just as it says in the tin really, in terms of it's an ordinary share. However, it doesn't carry carry a right to vote. And in terms of when these are used, the most common example is, is crowdfunding, I think yeah. probably for just in terms of the volume of shareholders you potentially have from an admin perspective. That's, if they're non-voting, it makes it very much easier than if they- Yeah, because if, yeah, if you need to get something changed in the company and it needs a resolution, if you've got to get just the paperwork of getting everybody to be yeah. aware of what you're trying to do, make, if they respond, people don't respond. So very much with crowdfunding, because of the number of people, it can be hundreds, if not thousands, of yeah. people who are yeah. yeah who are involved. 
So, I mean, we've, we've talked about there in terms of the different types that there have, but I think one of the things that is for people to think about is, is trying to make sure you get it right at the outset if you are going to have different types of shares for different reasons for different shareholders, because changing them later on down the line isn't necessarily an easy necessarily an easy thing no i mean you know there's a there's a set process to be able to do that but again the more shareholders you have like we were saying about the crowdfunding situation the the more administrative burden it is to make changes and things so i think from that side of it spending some time thinking about what might we want to do over the next few years yes. we can set it up because um, even if you don't issue the shares, the fact that the company has the oh. ability to issue an A, B or C share or a preference share or whatever, it, the, the, the exists within the Articles of Association that the company is allowed to do that. So even if it hasn't used that um, right to, to begin with. Um, but also there are potential tax consequences of making changes to share capital because you know once the company's up and running and you you know if you even if you haven't taken investment but uh, you know the shares have a value yeah. something is happening the, you know the business has a value so each share has a value and if you start changing the rights and doing things with that then the people who own those shares they can be deemed to have received something of value yeah. and then they have to pay tax on that when all you actually did was some administrative um, change internally because something wasn't quite set up correctly and it triggers a tax liability so well worth you can't you know crystal ball and, and get everything okay. right yeah, okay. um, and you may still miss something and I've never thought we'd do that and so it isn't set up in that way but um, it's worth just thinking about or talking with other business people yeah you know experiences that other people have seen of oh i wish we'd done that from the beginning because it would have made it easier yeah. later on because it just the automatic so oh we'll just have like a friend of mine set up their company 100 shares for a pound we'll just do the same your situation might be might be very different to yeah. theirs and in turn, you might end up potentially with the same answer but it's an important process to go through just to make sure that you've thought of the different things through before you just Go ahead and copy and paste almost from someone else definitely yes yeah yeah because you I mean you, you can change you can convert but getting it right from the outset is a far easier and less less costly it's going to be yeah, less costly to definitely do, yes to do right so i hope that's been helpful in terms of answering what different types of shares there are please uh, don't forget to subscribe we've got lots of other videos uh, to give you hints and tips and how to get the basics basics of business right uh, from day one and uh, we'll see you next time hopefully.